والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد so today which is the fifth of جماد الأولى ألف وأربعمائة وستة وأربعون الموافق للسابع من شهر نوفمبر ألفان وأربعة وعشرون نواصل درسنا في هذا الكتاب المبارك كتاب الله عز وجل أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يبارك فينا وفيما نتعلمه وأن يغفر لنا الزلات ويغفر للمؤلف ويرفع درجته المؤلف ابن كثير ويرفع درجته في الأليين So بإذن الله عز وجل we continue from where we stopped and as Hamad mentioned we were talking about the saying of Allah سبحانه وتعالى واستعينوا بالصبر والصلاة Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advised us and commanded us to seek the support in whatever we do to please him. Uh, support of what? Support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through patience and salah. So we talk about uh, patience last time and the categories of uh, patience. And uh, patience is to control yourself, you know, not to make a negative reaction and also uh, to resist you know, any possible evil that might distract you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, we mentioned that there are three types of uh, patience. Patience when it comes to doing the righteous deed, and patience when it comes to um, uh, staying away from the ma'asi. And the last one is patience when it uh, comes to the calamity uh, striking a believer. And the first one, I guess we talk about it, right? Yeah, the ta'at, they are a bit a burden upon their creation, right? That's why we call them taklif. So a person needs patience, especially when it comes to the istiqama, to maintain what you believe to be correct and the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not easy. You can accept Islam, you can accept righteousness, but to keep it up, you know, to maintain it, you know, forever, as long as you live, this is not easy. You know, it's not easy. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told that companion, when he asked him about an advice which he would not need to ask anybody after him, قَالَ قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ ثُمَّ اسْتَقِمْ Believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and maintain your istiqama. And this is what Surah Al-Asr is, is all about. Believing in Allah and also putting that faith into uh, action and uh, conveying the message to others, inviting others and observing patience in all of it forms. You practice the, the religion first, and you command people to do, and you observe patience also while doing. And also the same goes to the ma'asi, patience when it comes to staying away from the ma'asi, especially in our time, right? The ma'asi is rampant everywhere. Wherever you go, you are living with the ma'asi. So it's not easy to observe patience. And that's why when you are patient in the time of ours, you know, the reward is, is very, very big. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, behind you there are days of patience, a yamu, a sabr. Behind you, you have the days of, uh, of patience. And he says, uh, the one who is uh, holding upon his religion without compromising any part of it, he will be like somebody who is holding upon al jamr a piece of fire, right? And he says, the one who observes patience, you know, without uh, showing, you know, any negative reactions towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing the wrong thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant him the reward of how many... Uh, companions? 50. 50 companions. Actually, in some narrations, he says, Shaheed from the companions, actually. Yeah. So big reward. But how to be patient is not easy. Yeah. Living in our time, if you know what is around you, you know that, yes, being patient is not easy. Yeah. So that's why you should always remember the reward that you will be given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the reason why we are told about those rewards. Because if you know about the reward, you should be motivated to, to do it, right? Uh, one of the companions was with the Prophet Sallallahu during one of the battles, right before the battle. The Prophet Sallallahu said, if you are, you know, to be killed in this battle, for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, you will get this and that, this and that. He mentioned the Jannah. So it was very interesting to that companion and all of them actually. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, you mean if I got killed in this place, I got the, this place that you, you told us? He said, Bakhin, Bakhin. You know? He said, Ya Rasulullah, 
Rasulullah, like, please repeat what you said, and, and it, I want to hear it again. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam repeated. So Allah, he has some few tamr on his hand. This is the only thing that left for him. He says, uh, "La in baqit hatta aakul hadi, la in la hiya hayatun tawila." He said, "If I live until the time I finish this, these few tamarat, this is a very long life." Yeah, he threw it away and just uh, get to uh, fight those enemies of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and he got what he was looking for. You know. So uh, mentioning Jannah, mentioning you know reward, uh, it is supposed to be acting as a motivating you know factor for a person to come closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and it makes you more patient, right? You know what you will be getting, you'll be more patient. Yeah, the more knowledge you have about something, the importance of the thing, the more you will be serious in in doing it. Get it? That's why Jannah is replete. I'm sorry, the Book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is full of these mentions. You get this, you get that, you get, you get this, you get that. To motivate you, Allah doesn't need that at all. But knowing our nature, we love these type of things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you that if you are good, which is benefiting you, not him, but he will also reward you with this and that. You get it right. So sabr, sabr, sabr. When it comes to righteousness and when it comes to ma'asi, sabr, be patient. Right? Stay away from anything that can put you into trouble. Don't come closer near the ma'asi. You know that? Business is haram. Then come closer to it. Yeah, whatever ta'wil you have, that ta'wil is going to, to be to be wrong. Yeah, at the end of the day, you will get involved in those uh, ma'asi and we, it will be very difficult for you to come out of it. Right? A relationship with the opposite gender. What is the best way to, 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 to fix it? Just don't come near. Allah says, لا تقرب الزنا إنه كان فاحشة وساء سبيلا Never trust yourself into uh, I mean, when it comes to this uh, matter. Yeah. Um, Imam Ahmad said he can accept any person, no matter how much ugly this person is, but he would never agree. Uh, I'm sorry, he, uh, he can uh, accept any money you give him. No problem, but he would never agree with him being in charge of taking care of uh, the opposite gender, no matter how much ugly they are. Yeah. Never. That's knowing one's self. Mm. That's a person who knows himself because we are human. Don't trust yourself in this. Yeah, we told about that person that the scholars mentioned his story when they talk about the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kamathal shaytani it qala lil insani ukfu You know, he told the uh, uh, shaytan come to uh, the person and ask him to disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala falamma kafara qala inni bari'un minka inni akhafu Allah rabbal alameen he tells him, after he became kafir, shaitan told him, accept kufr. After he accept the kufr, then shaitan told him, no, I'm not with you anymore. They mentioned the story of this uh, person from Bani Israel, true story. Somebody who was very dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the mistake he did is to accept being in charge of taking care of a sister. And she's going to stay next to him, in his, uh, next to his masjid in the forest. Nobody except him and, and her. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, shaitan is going to be the third one. And that's what happened. To cut the story short, from that peak of righteousness, and people see him as the best and number one in the city, to what? Zina. And he became murderer. And on top of this, he lost his religion at the end of the day. Because when the government was about to kill him because he, he committed zina with her. She gave a child, uh, birth to a child. He killed the woman and killed the baby also. And then when they were about, the government is about to kill him, Shaitan came to him. He said, do you see all of these things that is happening to you? He said, I was the one who put you into, into all of this mess. And I am this and uh, so and so. Are you looking for any solution to save yourself? He said, yes. He said, make sujood for me. When you see the government approaching, those people who will execute you, they come next to you, then you just make sujood for me. That will help. So he made sujood for him. Right after the sujood, Shaitan told him, you make sujood to other than Allah, I'm not with you. He left. They kill him as who? As a kafir. He Allah. We have to be very careful. This is a very good example given to us by Rabbul Alameen. These things happen for a lesson for us. Trust me. Believe it or not, there are many relationships that end in, in zina. A lot, a lot. And at first, they start with good intention, as they said. No, he has good intention. Is there any good intention? 
No good intention. Kadhab, he's just lying. E wallah. Anyone who tells you that he has good intention, no good intention, he's just lying. Otherwise, why, did, why didn't he choose? And go and see them, especially the younger ones in the school. Yeah. They will tell you that they are having you know, a group assignment that will help them to cooperate, to think smarter. Yeah, they said this. It is always better for them to mix so that they will think smartly. Yeah. And then tomorrow when they commit zina, we come in the newspaper and say, people, uh, now life is corrupt. Even in the primary school, in the school also, we have these type of matters. What, what kind of result do you expect to, je to get if you open? Open the door. And who is the victim always? The boy or the girl? The girl. Always the girl. Yeah. Always the girl. It's the one who is naive in the making choices is always the side of the girls, unfortunately. And many of them, they never take lesson from those who were trapped. And you know, the sad part of it is he corrupted that person, right? Corrupt them. But then after, after that, if you tell him to marry her, he will tell you, no. Why can't you marry her? You have been with her for ages. He will tell you, no, I cannot trust her anymore. <laughs> Why can't he trust her? Because if she agrees to submit herself for him to play with, for sure he is not sure who is she going to be playing with in, in the future. She might repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but trust me, everyone can accept her repentance, but not him. Yeah, somebody needs to be very careful. You Allah, somebody needs to be very careful. It's not a joke. The honor of a woman, when it is gone, no way for you to bring it. That's why the scholar said, you can see how Islam is very harsh on this matter. He says the compensation for this is life sentence for the person who penetrated it. But then we found nowadays people made it very, very cheap and they don't care. Somebody has to wake up and understand the plot against, against them. So as I said, the one who should be monitoring should be very careful, should be the side of the sisters more. And subhanAllah, they have this natural protection Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them. But unfortunately in our time, they, they neglected it. In every community, a woman is very sensitive. Very sensitive. Even in a non-Muslim community, this sensitivity is there. When she screamed, people support. And the first person to be the criminal is the, the brother, not her. They have to go into a lot of investigation for her to hold, for them to hold her responsible first. That's a prestige, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put. So she has to open that door first for the criminals to come. If she doesn't, it will be very difficult for them to, to come. They have to use force. But in the normal circumstances, they cannot. He can talk to anyone, but tell him to talk to a woman, he will be shy. He will be having a, a strong heart beating, you know. But he can talk to anyone. So this is when it comes to talking to a decent uh, person. But if he's to talk to the corrupt person, ahlan wa sahlan. So Allah has I said, somebody has to be very, very careful. Uh, when you study, make sure you know the objective of what you're doing. Seeing the opposite person, I'm talking to both. Seeing the opposite uh, person next to you doesn't mean it is free since you are in the university to do whatever you want. Free mixing is haram in any place. Any place. And it's just, we just have to understand this. You know. May Allah guide us to the truth and help us to be part of fixing the community through uh, this. Yeah. Allah, what is facing us is really a big matter. Yeah. Social media is so powerful and so strong. That's why last time I said, divorce it unless if you need it. If you don't need it, Allah, you live a peaceful life. Then go. It's a waste of time. The vast majority of it is a waste of time. You know I'm telling you the truth. The vast majority of it is a waste of time. So please, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Understand the value of your time and understand the threat against you and the plot against you by the enemy using these platforms. So use it when it is necessary. You have da'wah purposes, you have Silat rahim you have some other matters, business, and all of these are good and noble in your purposes. But just browsing around to see what is there, I am telling you, a believer doesn't have time for this. You know? And then tomorrow when we tell you, do this, well, I don't have time. But how much time you are spending on the, the media unnecessarily, 
see a lot, huge amount of time. But things which are beneficial to you, you don't have time for them. You know why we, you don't have time? Because the scholars already mentioned that you are busy with these things. They will distract you from that which is beneficial. You, have, you, you will have time for everything that is useless. But when it comes to things which are really beneficial to your dunya, Adam, just leave them. Any these people are just wasting our time. You know. Example of what we are doing. <laughs> I think we should apply for them to move from this place. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Anyway, Allah guide them and guide us. So, so staying away from the ma'asi is wajib, and patient is wajib. You know, because they are very attractive. You get it? Allah says, "La taqrabu, then come near." Yeah, because when you come near, you will definitely get involved. Exactly. Inshallah, Allah Subhanahu provided us with a way out, right? You just have to utilize that way out. And we have no excuse. We make it complicated. This is our problem. Allah SWT made it very simple and easy. The last category of sabr, patient is the patient when calamity strikes you. you know, this one is necessary because uh, we are created also to be tested. As a Muslim, is part of our nature to be tested. It's good for us to get the test. Yeah, It acts as an expiation and also removing your sins, elevation in ranking, and also wake you up to wake up from your unconsciousness and do the right thing. There is always a wisdom behind the test. Allah says, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتَرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يَفْتَنُونَ Do people think that Allah is going to leave them just because they say we believe and they will not be tested by Allah. So test comes in any form. My advice to all of us, don't determine which test you will accommodate and handle. Just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you and to grant you peace. And be ready, whatever test comes from you to take, uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you, to handle it nicely, in a good way. You get it? Don't say to yourself, no, this kind of test, I can handle this one, I cannot. No, because we're not the one who are choosing the way to be tested. You get it? Understand your nature and understand how much Allah SWT loves you. He knows exactly what he does. So whenever he tested you, there is a wisdom behind it. All that you have to do is to be patient and to do the right thing. Then it will be a win-win situation for you. Otherwise, you will lose. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not care. He is fa'alun lima yurid. You're going to crumble. You're going to cry. You're going to t t talk against Allah. They do actually. In the past and up to date also people are doing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not stop the decree he planned for this life. He will go according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed. So who is losing? We are losing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never get affected in any way. So which one is for the uh, better for the believer? Sabar. Yeah. If you are patient, Allah says, Inna ma al-usri yusra. After every difficulty comes, comes ease. Test will come, and when it goes, then what will replace it is ease, prosperity. Allah SWT says, Inna ma al-usri yusra. Inna ma al-usri yusra. How many usri he mentioned? One. How many yusr? Two. He says, Inna ma al usri al usr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dhakarahu ma'arrafan min jadeed. In the next ayah also, ma al usr al usr al usr al usr, which means the second one is the first one also, the same. But the second, the, the, the yusr, the ease, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned it twice because it is munakkar. We mentioned nakira huna, and the second place also nakira, then this one is not the first one. Two different things. That's why it came in the sunnah that lan yaghliba. Asrun Yusrain. Yeah, there is no way for two for difficulty and hardship to defeat two eases. So we just mustajdeen. 
Hey, Allah, sabr, sabr. Whatever happens to you, take it positively and do the right thing and wait for the result. Rabbuka says, Inna ma'al usri yusra. You get it? So whenever calamity comes, sabr. Don't crumble. And don't choose how to be tested. And get ready to accept whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for you. And do the right thing. I always mention to you the way the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa addressed these matters. Actually, he is tested. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Allah loves him more than anybody else. But do you know that he is tested much more than us? You know, they ask him, who is the one that received the most harshest test? He says, Al-Anbiya, the Prophet of Allah. You know, go look at the, the prophets in their life to see when they are tested, subhanAllah, they really suffer. It doesn't mean Allah SWT doesn't, doesn't like them or hates them. No, there is a wisdom behind that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa look at the test he faced, a lot of tests, a lot, a lot. And he was sabir, sabir. When he lost his son Ibrahim, the son of Maria, so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa cried. He shed tears. And somebody uh, told him, I guess Abdurrahman bin Awl, Abdurrahman bin Awf, he said, Ya Rasulullah, you also cry? He said, yes, this is the mercy that Allah SWT put in the heart of his creation. And Allah doesn't show mercy to somebody who doesn't show mercy to others. SubhanAllah, one of the, the scholars, may Allah forgive him, when his son died, he laughed. Somebody was praising him. He said, this is the quwa in Rida. But you know, Ibn Taymiyyah has another than to say it. Dealing with people like even Tamiya is really good. You always throw your attention in how to deal with matters, to become a normal person. Yeah, not to go and, and act like somebody who is crazy. And a person lost his son. He lost his son, and you see him laughing. What are you going to say? Majnoon. Majnoon. <laughs> Allah is right, Majnoon. He lost his father, and we see him laughing. Yeah, we will have an ambulance next. If he goes beyond the limitation, we take him to the hospital immediately. But then somebody amongst the scholars was praising this sheikh, was saying that this is very strong rida, bi qada'illahi azza wa jal. Ibn Taymiyyah said, no, that's actually an absolute deficiency. He says when his chest is not wide enough to accept the two types of ibadah, ibadah to rida, bi qada'illah, and ibadah to ar-rahmah. He says that's why his chest is so congested, so narrow. He cannot accommodate both ibadat. That's why he favored one of them. As for Rasulullah, his chest is so wide. It accommodates both ibadat to rida bi qada illa and ibadat to rahma li ibadillah. What did he say when his son died? He says, Inna bi firaq, inna wallahi. بِفِرَقِكَ يَا إِبْرَهِيمْ لَمَحْزُونُونَ He says, we are saddened, we are so sad because of your demise, Ibrahim. Subhanallah. This is ibadah to mercy, right? Yeah. He says, we are so sad. That's why he, he shed the tears. Seeing the way the, the soul is moving. He says, uh, he says, وَلَا نَقُولُ That's the second type of ibadah. He says, however, لَا نَقُولُ إِلَّا مَا يُرْضِ الرَّبِّ he said, we will never say anything except that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see how, how to make it right? So you cry, but at the same time, you also control your emotions. Right? That sister, you remember her, right? Who was crying next to the grave of her child. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told her, Isbiri. She said, Ilayka anni fa inna kalam tu sab bi musibati. She said, get out of my way. You are telling me to be patient because you are not afflicted by the same musibah that happens to me. She was chasing who? Hamad? No. <laughs> she was chasing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Yeah. She was chasing Rasulullah. And you know Rasulullah is the simplest person. Did he tell her, Ana Rasulullah, wallahi la wardik. I'm going to show you. Did he tell her this? No. She said, get out of my way. He said, no problem. He left. He has other jobs. He left. 
She says she doesn't want. The nasiha, he left. Yeah. And some people are like that. Ittaqillah, he will not. So much traumatized, he doesn't want to listen to anyone. And later on, he's going to, you know, cool down. And remember what happens, he will regret. And that regret will never benefit him. So when she went to the Prophet ﷺ afterwards, somebody reminded her about the evil consequence of what she did. She went and met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she said, she told him, Ya Rasulullah, I will be patient. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I will be patient. He said, no problem. She said, sorry, Ya Rasulullah, I did not recognize you. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no problem. But you have to know that, إِنَّمَا الصَّبْرُ عِنْدَ الصَّدْمَةِ الْأُولَى Patience, that last one that I want you to observe, is the one that you have right when the calamity hits you. So when somebody lost his a family member. What happened to that house? Angels will come to the house. Yeah, this is what you should tell everyone. If it happens that it turns to your family, because this is sunnah in life, if you don't die, somebody in your family is going to die. Yani, what happens is that Allah will send angels to the family. Angels will come to the family. And they will be listening to what people are saying. Yeah, if you have a person who says, uh, I will get into trouble. You know, this person is supporting my life. He has been father and the mother and everything for me. And now he's dead. That means I am in trouble. The angels will say, Ameen. Yeah, they will say, Ameen. And he will, Allah, that person might be facing a lot of issues in his life and he doesn't know where did he get them. He was the one who asked for it. If he say, Rahimahullah, may Allah forgive him, may Allah protect the children, he will say, Ameen. Allah wants to see the first reaction that happened from those the people who lost a family member. So, my dear brothers and sisters, sabr, sabr, sabr. In this life, you will be in a test until the time you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We finish with this, a new one will come. We finish with this, a new one will come. So, as I said, the way to win you know, uh, this uh, uh, matter is to observe patience and not to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the list of tests you can handle. Just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you ability to understand and to handle a test in the way it should be handled. You get it? And don't interfere the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take a lesson from this uh, poet when he says, Da'i al-maqadira tajri fi a'innatiha. وَلَا تَبِيْتَنَّ إِلَّا خَالِيَ الْبَالِ مَا بَيْنَ غَمْضَةِ عَيْنٍ وَانْتِبَاهَتِهَا يُغَيُّرُ اللَّهُ مِنْ حَالٍ إِلَى حَالٍ He said, let the maqadir al-umur tajri fi a'innatiha. Let the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala move in the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribe it. لَا تَبِيْتَنَّ إِلَّا خَالِيَ الْبَالِ Don't you ever let yourself sleep. Please, 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 ask yourself, are you like this? When you go to the bed, your, your heart is free from any worry. Your heart is free from any worry. If you're not like that, change from today. You Allah, when you get inside your house, you go to the room to sleep, go and sleep free of thinking of anything. Live a life, you know, of present, you know. Utilize your present. Don't worry about the future. Don't worry about the past that is gone. You will be depressed and nobody is to help you in that way. He said, let the maqadir of umur tajri fi a'innatiha wa la tabitan illa khali al-bali and then he mentioned this beautiful statement. مَا بَيْنَ غَمْضَةِ عَيْنٍ وَانْتِبَاهَتِهَا يُغَيُّرُ اللَّهُ مِنْ حَالٍ إِلَى حَالٍ Between, within the blink of an eye, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change the situation. You Allah, we have seen this a lot, a lot. And I am pretty sure you in your life, you have witnessed moments in your life like this, but we just don't pay attention to, to them. We just don't pay attention to them. Yeah. I remember in, uh, I told some of you this uh, story in, uh, when we applied for recognition in one of the, the countries of our foundation. Very tough. Spent years looking for, two years actually, not years, two years, looking for it, but it doesn't work. We fulfill whatever they want. Yeah, at the end of the day, they told us there are some obstacles. There are some people who are different aqidah, so they don't want Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaah and all of these things, so we understand. And subhanAllah, at the end of the day, I told myself how much we lost of effort and also 
we put our trust somehow on that thing indirectly, thinking that the most important success that we will get in our project is when we got that one. And subhanAllah, at the moment, I told myself, let us just keep them aside. SubhanAllah, all the achievements you see now we are talking about, we got them after we kept them aside. Yeah. So I remember when we were looking for it, this is the example I wanted to give. When we were looking for it, they told us, actually the process is like this. If they agree, the ambassador of that country has to visit your place, the, the office. And we have a very small office in the middle of, uh, actually the marketplace, the office is there. It's not easy to recognize it. I remember when we signed for an account, the bank went and they couldn't see it because usually the organization see bad banner and all of this. We don't have that one. Later on, they went and they found it. It's okay, no problem. They agreed to register. So when we are told that the ambassador is going to visit, I told the brothers there, that, that is a mushkila here. <laughs> you know, ambassador, when he comes, of course there are security from the government. They're going to come and all of these things. How can we bring him to that little tiny office in the middle of the market? I said, maybe this is the time for us to look for a better place. But then, how? They asked me, how do you make it? I told them, uh, I don't know, but you guys just go and look for a place conducive, appropriate, and then we will see how to make it. SubhanAllah, I was there, Mahmoom, thinking of, you know, at any time these guys will call us and say, okay, the ambassador is on the way to go. <laughs> We carry that. SubhanAllah, I got a phone call from uh, a brother from one of the countries. He said, there is a sister who is looking for uh, a way to build an Islamic center. And she has the money. She's asking, can you do that? Well, I was like, Allahu Akbar. You <laughs> Allah, yesterday we are just, we, we have no clue, you know. We have no clue. But today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove it. That's how we exist, actually, from that one. Yeah. You know, I have a lot to share with you. I will add one more, and then I go back to my sabr. I told the brothers one day, I want to see a hospital for the sisters only. Yeah, you're struggling to have one well to be dug, and, and I'm talking to them about hospital. They always laugh. Yeah, they always laugh. Never believe in that. I always push them, please, I need the, the proper plan. And I don't have a single cent for that. And we're talking about hospital, not school. You know, the equipment uh, itself, one, one can build the whole. Thing. So I have to force them to give me the, the plan, and they don't want to give. SubhanAllah, none of them believe in that. So. One day, I got a brother who came from, uh, from Saudi, but he visited Nottingham. Those brothers, may Allah reward them. They brought him to meet me. So when he, we were talking, then I told him about the projects we have. So then I talked about the hospital. He told me, he says, inshallah, you will not die before you see this. And I kept quiet, he also kept quiet. So after, I don't know how many months, I received a call from him. He said, you remember last time you told me about the, the hospital? I said, yes. He said, we are ready to go for it. SubhanAllah. Nobody believes in that uh, back there. home. <clears throat> so all of these, now we have it. And we are also having the extension. May Allah SWT give us ability to finish it. But I just want you to understand, depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't worry about the qadr because he decided. Wallah. You see, when I established this uh, foundation, which I believe is, inshallah, for all of us, I learned a lot of lessons that not to lose hope in Rabbul Alameen. I can tell you our experience, we never set up a target. Sooner or later, we will get it. And at first, many people will be thinking that you're just joking. And I have a firm belief that, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always has his own way, and I see it. And this is who we are in our life. Every single Muslim is like this. This is not because of Ibrahim. Or because of those people who are working with us, no. Oksimu billah, this is how the system works. Just put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and wait for, for the result from Rabbul Alameen. Yeah. I was absent when I came to Malaysia from home for five years. I remember after Salat al-Asr, 
I, I was on the way back home. I cried and I make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah to grant me ability to go back home and meet my mother and also ability to see Saudi once again. Yeah. SubhanAllah, two days only after that. A friend of mine called me. He said there is a person who is uh, sick here. And, uh, and uh, please, I want a favor from you. I said, how can I help you? He said, I want you to bring him back home. I said, I can't because I'm expecting a child. I cannot leave my family like this. He said, no problem. I, t I told him, please, I can assign somebody to do the job. He said, no, I want you. I insisted. He said, no, I want you. I said, no problem. He said, what do you want from us? I said, just wait for us. If I got my child, then I will let you know. SubhanAllah, in a few days, the child comes. I called him. I told him, uh, uh, khalas. Now, how much you give me to stay to make sure that everything is fine? He asked me how much you need. I said, I need one week at least. He said, we give you 10 days. SubhanAllah, they bought the ticket free. I wanted it actually to go with my money. Allah refused. He gave me the one free. I went, and the parents also gave me a lot of gift. They were thanking me. I was like thanking them, but they were. When I came back to Malaysia, to the school, I was teaching in the school at that time. SubhanAllah, I just came to the school. I found my name among the teachers who will be accompanying students to, to Mecca for free. So all of these things I'm just sharing with you, I'm pretty sure. In your life, you have moments in your life that you pass there like that, but we just don't pay attention to them. Rabbul Alameen is kareem. You Allah. As a Muslim, you should always be happy that you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on your side. Wallahi, the moment you start losing hope, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يأسوا من روح الله إلا القوم الكافرون. Nobody lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except a kafir. I bought a printer that I bought it, 1,700 uh, real Saudi in those days. It was stolen. I did not use it for, for a single one time. It was stolen from my, my room. It stays with the thief for one year. Oh, Allah, he brought it back after one year. And he did not use it. He brought it back. I came to my room. I found something on the bed being covered with the blanket. I opened. I became so brave to see what is that. I open, I see something in the, in, the, in the plastic. I remove that plastic, I see another plastic. Remove that plastic, another plastic also. Yeah, when I open, I see my print, including the paper that I left inside, it been that one also he did not use. Rabbuka Kareem. Depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not lose anything, inshallah. So, sabr, sabr, sabr. Ma bayna ghamdhat aynin wa antibahatiha yugayyirullah min halin. I'm not mentioning this uh, to you for you to understand that, yeah, this person, no, Allah is not. He's not. I'm nobody. Everyone is like that. But we just don't pay attention to what is going on in our life. Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will see amazing things taking place in your life. And be happy to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for you and waiting for you to ask for it. The moment you start losing hope, you are the real loser in this life. And don't you ever take some, something as difficult to be achieved. Nothing with Allah. That's to you difficult to be achieved. But to Rabbul Alameen is not. Wallahi, Allah can provide you with everything you need within the blink of, of an eye. Actually, even lesser than that. We pass a moment. We got things. We ask the people who gave it to us. How does that happen? They tell us we don't know. E Allah. They, they say we don't know. Why do you get it in a very quick way? They say, we don't know. We're also surprised. How come it is so speedy going like this? Yeah, because Rabbul Alameen says you have to get it. At the time, nobody expects anyone to get it at that moment of time. You got it. But that's Rabbul Alameen. So put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dear brothers and sisters. And don't worry. Depression is not supposed to be part of our life. So sabr whenever the calamity strikes you. Allah knows what he does. And be idhni Allah ta'ala, if you are patient, you will receive nothing from Rabbul Alameen except, except good. Qala was ta'inu bi sabri wa salah. And also seek the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in doing all of your activities through the salah. You know, if you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala correctly, the prayer of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it makes life easy for you. Umar radiallahu anhu said, he says, the best amongst all of your deeds is the salah. If a person is negligent in the prayer, you will find him being negligent in doing everything. You Allah. But you have to pray correctly. 
Prayer is protection. In this dunya, and it will be also protection in, in the akhirah. <coughs> Juraj, when he was in trouble, what did he do? He prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, two rakat. When he came after those prayers, miracle happened. Ayah happened. He hit the stomach of the baby who was, support, who was attributed to him. Kadiban. They falsely attribute the child to him. And they beat him up because of that. When he touched the boy, he said, Man Abuk, who is your father? The boy speaks, and the boy was just recently born. That's salah. You know. The closest moment you are is when you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It protects you here, and it also protects you in the hereafter. Man salla al fajr fi jama'ah, fa huwa fi dhimmatillah. If you pray fajr in jama'ah, you will be under the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until, until the evening. Allah will protect you. And there is no way for you to be harmed as long as you are under the care of Rabbul Alameen. So please, preserve this prayer. Yeah. If there is anything to be negligent with, it shouldn't be the prayer. It shouldn't be your aqidah. It shouldn't be salah. It should be some other matters. But my personal advice to you, whatever Allah asks you to do, just do it. And be serious in doing. Even if it is sunnah. Just do it. Allah never prescribes something for us except for our own benefit. You do, you get the benefit. You don't do, Allah will leave you with the consequences of life. Very good system. So, inna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar. It keeps you away from al fahsha'i wal munkar. The least in terms of commissions of the sins, they are the Muslims who prays correctly. Who pray correctly according to the sunnah. I'm saying this because if I don't pray according to the sunnah, my prayer is useless. I cannot tell myself I'm praying. I have to pray correctly according to the way the Prophet ﷺ prescribed for us. This is the salat that benefits us. You get it? Yeah, try your best to enjoy your prayers. Be like the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. Be like Rasulullah. He said, Ju'ilat qurrut aini fi salah. Ibrahim, when he, his wife was taken by that criminal, what did he do? He prayed. She also, when she reached that uh, criminal, she asked for the water to make wudu and prayed to Allah to protect her. The righteous predecessors, they understood that the best way to approach Rabbul Alameen whenever you need him is to pray to him. Do you get it? So please, don't belittle this prayer. Take it very serious, seriously. And in the hereafter also is your, is your protection. Yeah? Because the first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the angel to check amongst your deed is the prayer. If the prayer is perfect, then khalas. Bidin light Allah to Jannah. If the prayer has deficiency, they will take from the sunnah prayer to fix it. If there is no sunnah prayer to fix it, then a person has to face the consequences of hisab. And don't forget, Rabbul Alameen is the one who is doing the hisab. You know, Rabbul Alameen is the one who is doing the hisab. Give you a founder among those things, you know, many things people are sending on the media are rubbish. But there is one which I found very interesting and I shared with you many, uh, many times. Where the person who broke the law, the traffic rules, he crossed in one of the non-Muslim countries. He crossed the traffic. And then they sent him a letter to the house that you crossed the, uh, crossed the traffic and the fine is this, this and that. But if you disagree, you should write. They provide a space under the letter. Just write and send the letter back to the, to the place where you got it. He said, intentionally, I disagree. I know I did, but he disagreed. You know? And then when he disagreed, they sent another letter. Very interesting one. With three pictures. Yeah. Picture number one, when he approached the traffic light. The camera captured him. Picture number two, when his car is between the traffic light. Like this. Picture number three, when he crossed the traffic light. What left? <laughs> It doesn't go from up, you know. And he sees himself, he sees his car. So he said, I have, I have nothing to say except to tell them, yes, I did. Because he's well captured. SubhanAllah, he says, this is human capacity to do this. And he said, I remember the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna kunna nastansikhu ma kuntum ta'amilun. What is this istinsakh? To copy exactly what somebody is doing. That's why everything you do in this dunya, all your movements, all of them, they are well documented. 
well preserved, well captured by the angels. And they're going to bring it to the person on the day of judgment. Allah SWT says, Allah will tell them, You read yourself. And still you can have some criminals who will tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah asked them, do you think the angels oppress you? They write something which he did not do. He, say, he will say, yes. When did I do this and that? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell them, okay, since you don't agree with these ones, what do you think if I, if I can bring somebody from yourself to witness whether you are right or wrong? He will say, yes, I agree with that. Thinking that his body is not going to speak the truth. Then Allah will close his mouth. So... What will speak about him? His skin. His, uh, his leg, his hand. His body will talk. They will, explain, they will mention exactly what they did in this dunya. And then he will blame them. After that, Allah will open his mouth. Because now he, he cannot blame anyone anymore. This is him talking against himself. And then he will tell them, You guys, you're dumb. Are you dumb? You talk against us and you know, that, you know that we're going to go to hell and you say, you talk in this way? And then they will tell him, Allah makes us talk. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't want this to happen, why did you do what you did? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good. So the best way to make it on the Day of Judgment is to preserve your prayers. Because if you do the prayers correctly, trust me, you will be at the minimum when it comes to the commission of the sins. You will be the least, one of the least in terms of commit, committing the sin, as long as you are focusing in the prayer. Because the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designed them, subhanAllah, it's more than enough for us to stay away from the ma'asi. After Fajr, right after you wake up, the first thing is pray to Allah. Go in and sign the agreement that you will not go against his sharia. That's what Surah al fatiha is all about. And then after that, you spend some few hours, go to your business, haram, halal, batil, this and that. And then Allah bring you back the whole time. Remember what you said. You come down to your consciousness. Then after that, you go out, you have a shorter period of time, right? And you go out, you go back to your crime also. You know I'm telling you the truth. This is who we are, many of us. In the masjid, we are angels. Out of the masjid, Audhu Billah. Audhu Billah. Somebody says, I wish people they are like the way they are in the masajid. Brotherhood, mashallah. Friends, halal, halal. No haram. And all of these things, you feel so righteous. But after he goes back to his shop, meet his brothers out of the masajid, another personality. So Asar comes, Allah will invite you again. And then after Asar also, go back. But at that time, people relax a bit, right? Come back from work. So you are expected to cool down. But still, we have ma'asi also being committed because some people from their business to the, uh, the other kind of ma'asi. Allah will bring you back Maghrib time. After Maghrib, uh, you have very limited time. You know, Allah will bring you back for Isha. After Isha, you are supposed to, to sleep. Yeah, if you are not living in our time. In our time, uh, this is the new life... Uh, when the new life begins at night. Yeah, you are supposed to sleep. You're not supposed to be there committing ma'asi. Yeah, that's how prayer is keeping you, you know, uh, protected from, from the ma'asi and the sin. It removes the sins and takes you away also from, from the ma'asi because it always reminds you about Allah Rabbul Alameen. So in this life, you have the least of ma'asi. In the hereafter, Allah SWT will tell them to check the prayer. And if they check the prayer, if the prayer is perfect, they take you to Jannah. But if it is not, then they have to go through every single thing you did. And you know what does that mean? Rabbul Alameen is checking your life. You know what does that mean? So the best thing for you is to bypass this heavy hisab. Rasulullah said, Yawmul Qiyama, Ala al Mu'minina, Kaqadri ma bayna salat al Dhuhri wal Asr. He said, The day of judgment for the believers is just like the duration between Dhuhr and Asr. You can see how he connected with the prayers, right? They said, Ya Rasulullah, can we see Allah SWT on the Day of Judgment? He said, yes. Just like the way you don't get disturbed when you are trying to see the, the sun and the moon, little better. And then the Prophet Sallallahu said, therefore, if you can be able not to miss a prayer that is prayed before the Tulu'a Shams, before the sunrise, and the prayer that is prayed 
before the sunset, he said, do it. You see how he connects the seeing of Allah subhanahu on the day of judgment with the prayers. That means one of the main causes of you being able to see Allah on the day of judgment is to pray correctly. So these are the best two things that you do to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also to get the support of Allah in all of your affairs in this, in this dunya. Allah says, وَإِنْ نَهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِئِينَ Prayer is very heavy except on those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed khushu in their prayers. So inshallah in the next uh, dars we will just uh, wrap up this last part of the ayah and then move to this khashin. Who are the khashin? Allah SWT says, Alladhina dhunnuna annam mulaqu rabbihim annam ilayhi rajoon. Barakallahu feekum subhanakallahum wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfirullahu wa ilayka assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. No question? We have uh, three. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh, from Sister Ruqayya. Can someone travel without maharim if it is a school trip and it is safe? Well, I, the hadith of the Prophet said shouldn't happen as long as it is travel. Yeah. But if it's just in the city mm. or distance which is not a, a journey, it's okay. As long as it is safe. From Rain. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah. It's, an it's a nickname. And Kunya. <laughs> uh, I am often tested with the temptation of sinning. Sometimes I succumb to it and I feel guilty after committing it and make tawbah. I feel like Allah is making it hard for me to overcome this and not providing me a way out of it. What else can I do? To change that thought. Because it's wrong. Absolutely wrong. Allah is not making life difficult. On us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We are the one who are bringing difficulty to our life. Why can't I put effort to please Him and to do the right thing? I will find it easy and very simple. You know, Allah never made life tough for us, except if we choose life to be like that. Whatever you see yourself being, this is the matter of your choice. We choose to be in that way. So I advise this person to stay away from any of the causes of sin and to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to always reflect upon the consequences in the future. What could possibly, uh, possibly happen to him in this dunya and also when he meets Rabbul Alameen in the hereafter. You know? But shouldn't think about Allah in the negative way. This is wrong. This is the first mistake to be corrected. You know? The person has to be very positive and understand that Allah wants good for him. But we are the one who don't want good for ourselves. The Sharia from A to Z is all about providing ease to our life. There is no single part of the Sharia that is difficult. Whenever difficulty arises, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us an alternative, you know, to go with it rather than going with that tough part of life. You know. So I will advise uh, the person who is asking this question to readdress the matter, think uh, positively, and always think good about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try your best to stay away from the ma'asi, be with the good ones. Make sure that your friends are always excellent and be patient. From Luqman, how can our life be increased by being dutiful to our parents, maintaining family ties, being good to neighbors, having good akhlaq, when our lifespan has already been recorded and decreed in the lawh al-mahfuz? Yeah, we are not supposed to uh, check that one. We are always supposed to live in the present mm. the time we have. You know, I'm just supposed to always focus on my present time. What does Allah wants me to do? He wants me to pray, to preserve my aqidah, to be kind to my parents, to be kind to the believers, to be good in the society. Just do that, even if you have one second to live. One second, is it enough for a person to go to paradise? Yes. A person accepted, although it's not one second only, but he accepted Islam, and he got killed immediately during one of the battle. How many prayers he prayed to Allah? Zero. Zero. Where did he go? Jannah. Bi shahadat Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He got Jannah. He did not do anything except that one. And we have some people who at the last minute of their life, before they see the angel of death, they say, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. That person who was visited by the, visited by the Prophet, 
And he was a Jew. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa tells him to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. He said it and died instantly. Where did he go? Jannah. Jannah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so happy that he managed to save his life. So my uh, advice to that brother or sister who was asking this, just focus on the present time of your life and be good in that time. And don't you ever think negatively that I don't have time. I will give you a gift from Umar radiallahu anhu. He used to tell people, stand up, wake up, be productive for in al amr mutasa is tell them we still have time. Otherwise, if you think that you are about to die, that's what the Christians are doing with their people. They sell their business, they dissolve everything, they give wasiya, you know, waiting for that Isa alayhi salam to come. 2,000 years ago and never came until now. You get it? Mm. Now, in Islam, we don't have this. We know death is uh, coming at any time Allah SWT wants, but at the same time, we're not supposed to focus on that. We focus on how to die. We make that one by ourselves, looking for the support of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yeah, not when to die. When to die, we're not deciding. We're not in the decision. Allah already decreed it, and He knows when we will be dying. Yeah, many people live until more than 100 years. Why can't you just think in that way that you also might be living until 100 years? But just think also at the same time that death can come at any time, so that you you will be able to use the present time you have. May Allah grant us good. Nice. Uh, how exactly does reciting Qur Quran a lot in the day give barakah in time for that day? How, how exactly? How does reciting Quran a lot in a day give barakah in time of for that course. day? Of course. If you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how can you lose barakah? Reading Quran is being with Rabbul Alameen. How can you lose barakah? You get it? Mm. Quran is Mubarak. Reading Quran is Mubarak. You get mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You get protection. You get more risk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide you a way out from any predicament and obstacle you face in your life. May Allah grant us tawfiq. That's all. Alhamdulillah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shalallahu ilaha illa anta astaghfirullah tawfiq.